Hello and good morning, good evening, good night, wherever you are at. It's another edition for my YouTube channel. <clears throat> and uh, again, I have to thank you for watching this video. So, I've been chronicling my journey out of the watchtower. And a lot of the stuff that I found was didn't have to do with doctrines, just uh, stuff behavior actions that I did not approve of the United Nations uh, the pedophilia to witness rules and then finding about uh, Johannes Grieber and Daniel Mannix and how they're tied to the occult so I I knew I didn't want to be a part of this religion anymore but <clears throat> at the same time, I also knew I had to start from the foundation. I had to start from the ground up and, and work my way back up again because uh, if they lied to me about all these other things, what else have they lied to me about? So I started investigating what I believed in. And the first thing I investigated was the 1914 date. And the reason why I picked that was because... Um, I had given a public talk on a Sunday morning earlier this year and uh, the theme was about 1914 and God's kingdom and so I urged all in the audience that if they could not prove the 1914 date without the help of the publications then we got homework to do uh, we shouldn't need the Bible teach book to prove this date and honestly, I needed all the publications I could. It's just still, to this day, confusing and mind-blowing how we come up with that date. But, um, so that was what I thought about first. If I encouraged everyone in the audience to do that research, then I needed to do it myself. And I wanted to, um, when I gave that talk, uh, that was shortly before the memorial I think the week before the memorial and um, <clears throat> one thing led to another I, I think I started waking up pretty quickly like two or three weeks after that talk and so now is my time to actually be faithful on what I encourage the audience to do so the first thing I looked on, under on this topic was the latest articles that I wanted to do research on because uh, I kind of like history but I never did have the time to do it and so I looked under this Watchtower magazine sorry I had to print it out I don't have it I don't have a hard copy of this anymore but as you can see it's the October 1st 2011 Watchtower announcing Jehovah's Kingdom five lies about God exposed really this one needs to say five lies about Jehovah's Witnesses exposed but that's that's what we're doing here we're exposing them and it's fun exposing them it's good for the soul it makes you feel better so I invite you if you don't have a copy of that to pause the video and you can go on to www.jw.org and click on the publications list and then you can click on the I'm trying to think in my head the way it looks um, click on one of those drop screens for the watchtower and then click on 2011 on another drop screen and then press search and you will have all the watchtowers for 2011 uh, a lot of this stuff is free going back to 2010 I think watchtowers awakes even the watchtower study editions <clears throat> so uh, if you don't have it maybe you can pause for a minute and go download it and take a look at it while you're watching the video Okay, back to normal programming. Um, go to page 26 if you got it. 
here we have uh, when was ancient Jerusalem destroyed yeah it says uh, this is the first of two articles in consecutive issues of the watchtower that discusses scholarly questions surrounding the date of the destruction of ancient Jerusalem this two-part series presents thoroughly researched and Bible-based answers to answer questions that have puzzled some readers. Uh, it's puzzled many readers. So, <clears throat> I'm going to start taking a look at this. We're going to dissect this little by little. So, in that first paragraph, there's a footnote. There's actually two footnotes in that paragraph, but the second one, it says, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses produce a reliable Bible translation known as the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures. Oops. Where is it? Sorry, it's a little backwards. Known as the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures. You may prefer to use other translations when considering Bible subjects. This article quotes from a number of widely accepted Bible translations. Well, that statement is not true. If you consider two different translations, then yes, we have a number of widely accepted Bible translations. And as you see my notes, and the two articles, well, I think on this one only, I'm sorry, on this one only, you have nine references to the NIV translation and two references to the ESV translation. So... Again, we're using deception to think, to trick the readers into thinking, oh, we're using a number of, a number of translations. But that's not the case. All right, so getting into the first subheading. I wish I, I could just do this professionally and have this kind of pop up on my screen like some of the other good subscribers are. That, that make different videos but uh, this is gonna have to do I'll just uh, pop it up here so 70 years for whom and the key scripture there is um, Jeremiah chapter 25 verses 1 and 2 and I apologize let me go get my Bible I forgot to get it before I started Da, 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 the trusty sword silver sword and for those of you that I've sent uh, silver swords to I hope you are enjoying them and I've got one more sword to mail <clears throat> I'm gonna mail that tomorrow I promised I'd do it Friday or over the weekend and I like to keep my promises so that first scripture uh, Jeremiah 25 let's take a look at that together Verses 1, 2, and 11. It says, The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, the king of Judah, which was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. This is what Jeremiah the prophet spoke concerning all the people of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And then verse 11 of course, they skip a few verses that are pretty important, but verse 11 says, And this land will be reduced to ruins and will become an object of horror. And these nations will have to serve the king of Babylon for 70 years. Okay, verse 11 is the secret to unlocking this prophecy. Let's read this again. And these nations plural will have to serve the king of Babylon for get it 70 years okay so that's important because Jehovah's Witnesses believe that these 70 years apply to the destruction and complete desolation of Jerusalem that means it was destroyed and it laid barren for 70 years until they came back from exile uh, at the hands of the Medes and Persians. But clearly, Isaiah or Jeremiah 25, 11, I'm going to pull it up to my screen. Sorry. Uh, 2011. 
and this land will be reduced to ruins and will become an object of horror and these nations plural will have to serve the king of Babylon for 70 years it's pretty simple clear cut it's not a destruction of Jerusalem for 70 years it's a it's a uh, servitude that the nations plural not just the singular nation uh, of the tribe of Judah the Israelites it was plural multiple nations they would have to serve Babylon for 70 years so really I mean do we have to go any further um, I discussed this with my father just before I was disfellowshipped and we read that scripture and he basically said um, I'm making a big deal out of that word serve I'm focusing on one word and I said well it makes a big difference if it wasn't in there not to mention the nations plural nations plural plus serve it's it's easy you can't you can't paint it any other way so he said I was getting hung up on one single word and I said well let's look at what one word means to a scripture let's look at this scripture famous scripture Jehovah's Witnesses John 1 1 what word makes the difference in that translation a God so yes one word makes a big difference so I mean really there's there's no point of even discussing this anymore we already discussed firsthand that uh, that the dream image of the tree that Nebuchadnezzar had it applied to him and him alone um, it didn't apply to God's kingdom it didn't even say God's kingdom when, when it, it was speaking of God's kingdom it was Nebuchadnezzar himself referring to God and his kingdom <clears throat> when it said kingdom it was referring to Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom the kingdom of mankind so I mean we really didn't have to go any further on Nebuchadnezzar but we're going further just to debunk this chron uh, chronological theory that they got so they believe it's a 70 years of destruction but there's a problem because it mentions that um, in Jeremiah 29 10 oh, I forgot my bookmarker bear with me Jeremiah 25 10 it says uh, Twenty five ten says I will put an end to the sound of exultation and the sound of rejoicing from them the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride uh, the sound of the hand and the light the light of the lamp Oh, I'm sorry maybe I got something wrong uh, wrong scripture sorry about that uh, there at the end of verse 11 is what we're talking about now I'm sorry the end of verse 11 notice how it says they will serve the king of Babylon uh, for 70 years now um, some translations will say that they would serve instead of saying at Babylon they say for Babylon and really it's not some translation render it this way it's almost all translations render it um, for Babylon instead of at Babylon because that makes a difference if you're serving 70 years at Babylon or you're seven you're serving 70 years for Babylon so again it mentions that according to secular chron chronology the Babylonians dominated the land of ancient Jerusalem and Judah for some 70 years from about 609 until 539 BCE when the capital city of Babylon was captured this is undeniably 100% correct so when they preface this sentence with according to secular chronology well they're making it sound like secular history is wrong they have it right 
but really it's the 70 years servitude to Babylon not 70 years destruction of Babylon but we'll go further it goes on to say in the next paragraph the Bible however shows that the 70 years were to be a period of severe punishment from God aimed specifically at the people of Judah and Jerusalem who were in a covenant to obey him again reread the scriptures at Jeremiah 25 11 it's a servitude of all the nations for 70 years not aimed specifically at the Israelites or Jerusalem going to the next paragraph it says so according to the Bible the 70 years was a period of bitter punishment for Judah and God used the Babylonians as the instrument for inflicting this severe punishment again that's not according to the Bible it's according to the watchtowers the witch towers own interpretations so we'll go on to the next subheading it talked about when did the 70 years start it mentions a scripture from Ezra there at 2nd Chronicles 36 so I invite you to turn in your Bibles well, I'm starting to sound like I'm giving a public talk again. <laughs> Second Chronicles 36, verse 20 and 21. So he said, it says, he, he, that is Nebuchadnezzar, he carried off captive to Babylon those who escaped the sword, and they became servants to him and his sons until the kingdom of Persia began to reign. To fulfill Jehovah's word spoken by Jeremiah, until the land had paid off its Sabbaths. All the days it lay desolate, it kept Sabbath to fulfill 70 years. Okay, so first and foremost, what's important to me was that Ezra says to fulfill Jehovah's word spoken by Jeremiah. So here, Ezra is deferring to Jeremiah as the authority of the 70 years. And then at the end, he does say to fulfill 70 years, but that doesn't mean he was specifically saying there was going to be a desolation and a, the land laid Sabbath for seven years. It said, it, it said that this would just fulfill the 70 years, and, and there's nothing to that. So really, are you going to trust the person that copied or the person that originated the thought? Ezra plainly says, according to the word spoken by Jeremiah so he's deferring to Jeremiah and so we're gonna skip a few paragraphs because this is just there's really no use of discussing the next couple of paragraphs but we will go over when did Nebuchadnezzar destroy Jerusalem according to the Bible well let's open our Bibles that's the most important thing, right? Go to uh, 2 Kings 25. Second Kings 25, and let's look at 8 and 9. This says, In the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, that is, in the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, <clears throat> the king of Babylon, Nebuzadaran, the chief of the guard, the servant of the king of Babylon came to Jerusalem. He burned down the house of Jehovah, the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem. He also burned down the house of every prominent man. So, did you notice when did Jerusalem get destroyed and burned down? It mentioned in the 19th year of Nebuchadnezzar. And it was actually Nebuchadnezzar, his, his uh, chief guard, was the one that did all this. It wasn't actually Nebuchadnezzar according to these scriptures here. And so did this signify a complete destruction, a complete desolation of Jerusalem? Well, notice verse 11, 2 Kings 25, 11. Nebuchadnezzar, the chief of the guard, took into exile the rest of the people who were left in the city, the deserters who had gone over the king of the Babylon and the rest of the population. But the chief of the guard left some of the poorest people of the land to serve as vine dressers 
and as compulsory labors. Can we say honestly that Jerusalem lay completely desolate for seven years? Seventy years? Well, not if there was vine dressers and compulsory labors in the city. Then no, it wasn't. It was not lay desolate. And we can see even further evidence of Jeremiah. Let's turn in our Bibles back there again to Jeremiah. This time we're going to go to the last chapter, chapter 52. And I invite you to look at verses 28, 29, and 30. Now remember, this destruction of Jerusalem happened in the, what we read is the 19th year of Nebuchadnezzar. So, Jeremiah 25, verses 28 through 30. These are the people whom Nebuchadnezzar took into exile. In the seventh year, 3,023 Jews. So this was the very first deportation, and this is probably the deportation that Daniel and the three young Hebrews were deported on, this first one. The seventh year of Nebuchadnezzar. In his 18th year, again, we read in the 19th year, and that's a little um, a little topic of its own. You can go into regnal years or their ascension years. Uh, basically, um, I'm not going to go into that. I got I got them probably flipped around regnal and ascension years, but uh, you can look that up. Regnal years and ascension years. Um, so there were 832 people taken from Jerusalem when Bab or Babylon destroyed Jerusalem. And then verse 30 is really the key to the whole thing. In the 23rd year, so five years after Jerusalem was destroyed in the temple, Nebuchadnezzar, in the 23rd year of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, the chief of the guard, took Jews into exile, 745 people. So that means there was at least 745 people that were left over in the city to care as vine dressers and compulsory labors. So was Jerusalem completely destroyed and lay desolate for 70 years in the 18th year or the 19th year of Nebuchadnezzar? Uh, we just read conclusively from the Bible there were still people in Jerusalem after the temple was destroyed. So well, I mean, we're already trying to do gymnastics, spiritual gymnastics, to try and figure out how we can calculate these 70 years. Um, so let's go on to uh, so the 70 years did start in exactly at 539 BC because that's when um, Babylon was destroyed by the Medes and Persians and we could see this on this little box here a pivotal date in history the date 539 BCE when Cyrus II conquered Babylon is calculated using the testimony of cuneiform tablets and more cuneiform tablets but really this is what the Watchtower considers an absolute date. There's no questions about that. 539 is when Jeru uh, Babylon was destroyed. There's no if, ands, or buts about that according to the Watchtower. So really, um, so they have to go back 70 years from that 539, really. Because remember, we read it was 70 years servitude. So the day after Babylon was destroyed would be 70 years in one day. You'd have to go that night that Jerusalem, or I keep saying Jerusalem, that Babylon was destroyed. And then you can work your way backwards according to the watchtower. So when did it end? 70 years began with the destruction of Jerusalem. 
and it ended in 539 BCE and that is an absolute date confirmed by cuneiform tablets so that's where the watchtower is really messing things up with this 70 years um, they think it's 70 years complete destruction because others that's what other scriptures seem to imply but really when you take the whole context of things it's 70 years of servitude toward Babylon that all the nations would serve him and so what they do is they find that absolute date 539 BCE and since Jerusalem could not have been restored uh, because they believe it's still lay like, completely desolate uh, they actually calculate two years later when they actually arrived and started rebuilding the city and then they go back from that date not from when the servitude of Babylon ended so then they go on to try and discredit the historical classic historians um, and really they use some scholars in here uh, you see some of these dot dot dots Uh, where's the dot dot dots right there you see that dot 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 and so whenever you see a dot 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 in the watchtower you need to look it up because they're leaving out some important information so this one is getting a little bit longer um, they also go into the they try and discredit the canon of Ptolemy and here uh, how does Ptolemy's canon compare with ancient tablets we got Ptolemy's canon and down here the um, the Uruk king list as found on ancient tablets and their big thing is how does Ptolemy's canon compare with ancient tablets Ptolemy's omits some kings in his list why well, you can kind of do your own research in some encyclopedias and do the the math on these kings and see um, how many uh, years they ruled up. And I bet you you'll be surprised that we're only talking about a couple of months difference. And really, we're talking about the months of Labishai Marduk, the young uh, Babylonian king that lasted uh, no more than nine months and so he wasn't listed among the kings I mean why would you want to list someone that was um, was there for nine months oh man it's I don't know about your place but I forgot to put my air conditioner on when I got home from work it's a little warm in here I wanted to make this video before it got too late before my wife and kids got home from the Jehovah's Witness meeting so quick summary here it is uh, secular historians usually say that Jerusalem was destroyed in 587 BCE that is false all of them say that Bible chronology strongly indicates that the destruction occurred in 607 BCE uh, incorrect secular historians mainly base their conclusions on the writings of classical historians and on the calendar of Ptolemy eh, wrong they have thousands and thousands and thousands tens of thousands of cuneiform tablets these guys that they lean on that may have been the case 60 or 70 years ago but not anymore the writings of classical historians contain significant errors and are not always consistent with the records on clay tablets that's also false those um, classical historians they all pretty much harmonize with each other the watchtower again taking things out of context misquoting scholars and uh, trying to trick you trying to deceive you they're lying to you so was Jerusalem destroyed in 607 uh, so far we have a a prophecy to Nebuchadnezzar that doesn't even apply 
we have scriptures in Jeremiah that don't even apply. So, I mean, there's really no need for us to go any further. It's, it's, it's a closed case, it's said and done. But we'll keep going. We will keep going, that's for sure. The next one on our list is going to be the November um, Watchtower. It's the one that follows this. So um, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, probably on the Labor Day holiday. I'll do that one. I'll make a couple of movies since I got a day off of work. Yay, yay. And um, I think I'm going to make it a marathon day of making some videos exposing the witch tower so did Jerusalem get destroyed in 607 no was the 70 years applied to a complete desolation of Jerusalem no it was a servitude of 70 years did these classical historians really misrepresent each other no that's not true did the watchtower excuse me the witch tower um, misquote scholars again yes and so it's just the evidence is just mounting and mounting and mounting and so really I think the next uh, the next video talking about the uh, November 2011 watchtower is going to be an eye-opener as is everything else everything is always an eye-opener but uh, I look, I'm looking forward to that one also. Uh, I took some time to get get my thoughts together on this and to uh, do some research again that I did a few months back. And so it was really nice to uh, look that information up. And I do have a suggestion on a book. It is the Gentile Times Reconsidered, version 4. And... Uh, I actually read that book after I did all this research and also want to give big props to Londo on his um, his series really if you want to learn when Jerusalem was destroyed you need to watch his channel he's got about 30 videos on this and I've got about 30 minutes so um, and that, that guy breaks it down so if you really want to know when Jerusalem was destroyed you uh, take a look on his channel I recommend it if you're a history buff or a, a nerd or a geek or somebody that just likes to learn something new um, take a look at his channel I definitely endorse it um, he goes into a lot greater detail than I do and also that book by um, uh, Carl Olaf Johnson I think I'm saying that right. Gentile times reconsidered. I know for some of you that are not Jehovah's Witnesses and uh, basically everyone else in the world, this doesn't make any sense. I mean, why go into such detail about this event? But really, it's the, it's at the crux of Jehovah's Witness chronology. And so just like a deck of cards, if you take one piece up from the bottom the whole thing falls down and so we already did that with um, the destruction or that dream image with Nebuchadnezzar it doesn't even apply so there's not even really no use of making these videos but we're gonna go step by step and debunk this chronology and it's really interesting um, I know the rest of the world they already agree on when Jerusalem was destroyed 587 BCE there's no questions about that, but for Jehovah's Witnesses, it's um, they don't look into that stuff. They don't. They're basically spoon-fed by the Watchtower, and they eat it, and they don't look up information on their own, which is sad. Uh, I would say within, I would say two nights, I studied about six to eight hours, two or three nights in a row. And I already proved to myself that Jerusalem was not destroyed. And that's all it took. <laughs> 24 hours of studying. And um, without a doubt, I knew that Jerusalem was not destroyed on that date. And that prophecy in Daniel did not apply to God's kingdom. So 
Uh, we're going to continue in this series. I think I've been uh, kind of blabbering on for the last few minutes. Um, so let's just go ahead and end this right here, and we'll pick up on the next video. November 2011 Watchtower. Go download it at a computer near you.